Hi and welcome back. So, this is my second try on the fireweed thing I started on yesterday. I'm not gonna paint anything more on this version. That was just kind of a spur of the moment trial and all this was just a hot mess. So, um, yeah, these are all my p Daniel Smith paints. And before we start, I will actually show you some of the mixes that I talk about. Some of them are not so good to mix with. These are the colors I I swat, decided to swatch out. So I got the cobalt violet here. And um, yeah, my cat is playing in the background. Um, so that's a cobalt violet. It's quite degranulating, and um, it's difficult to 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 get up in intensity. That's when I just dip the the brush a little bit, and I added a little bit of ultramarine on it. So it it's, it's kind of pale in itself. It's difficult to get up in the mass tone where it's nice. This is the burnt bronzite. Nice reddish brown and the, the color I decided to, to keep. Here's the mummy bauxite. These are two are pretty close. This one's not quite as intense and it is not quite as red and it does have no glitter. This one has natural glitter in there. So I'm gonna keep this until it's done and it's fine. There's nothing wrong with this. It is just those two colors are very close. That's the hematite burnt scarlet. And you can see how I'm gonna put some extra light on here. Um, where's my focus thingy? There. You can see how heavily granulating and separating this is. This is all just one paint, so it separates into that red, scarlet, orange kind of color, and then there's the the black hematite grains that that separates out and granulates. Here's the Garnet Genuine, that's a nice flat, uh, no, almost coral pink color, very nice. And here's the Piemontite Genuine, it looks a lot like the Hematite Burnt Scarlet, it does the same thing, just the, the base color of this is more pinkish red. It actually looks like it's Garnet that is in here, it could be Garnet and Hematite these two. Um, really separating and gen granulating. That's the bronzeite genuine, and you can see the glitter on that. It has a lot of glitter, but it's very pale, and that's the mass tone down there. So it's it's a very faint and pale color. It's not bad. It is just a little difficult to to use in mixes. Here's the undersea green, and it separates out into this almost ochre yellow, yellow ochre and a grayish green. There's three pigments in there and they separate. It can be an interesting effect, but it can also be annoying if you want to have like a flat color. The jadeite, nice and flat, nice dark mass tone. The hematite, which I don't like, has this dirty grayish color and the granulation is just crazy. It is it's worse than the Hematite, Burnt Scarlet, and the Piemontite. And um, it, it just looks dirty. And things you mix with it just come out looking dirty. The Mayan Blue. There's a little bit of a backwash here. And that's the paper. This is a, an inexpensive um, cellulose paper. But really nice blue, greenish blue. You, and I'm considering if I should use this instead of indigo and Prussian blue um, because this is light fast and it doesn't it's a single pigment indigo is always a mixed uh, pigment color and Flato, uh, Prussian blue is uh, is uh, it's not it's light fast but it has this tendency to, to pale out when you expose it to light. The color comes back if you put it in the dark for a while, but 
that's just annoying. You don't paint pictures to put them in the dark for ever so often. So I'm considering if that should really be a permanent. Here's the roller night and here's a little bit of backwash again. I've put a lot of water on here. Nice flat color. Um, and up here is some, some mixes. I had to, I cleaned up my, my palette a little bit, but I had some new gamboge where I had some uh, phalo blue. And then I mixed in hematite and you look, it just looks dirty. I tried the Piemontid. I didn't have a lot of that left on my palette. And I cleaned up my yellow, lemon yellow where it's also I had some phalo blue on it. Um, it worked a little better than the hematite. And here's the hematite burnt scarlet and I put some pal scarlet in there. and. It just made it brighter. It's just kind of a a brighter version of this. Um, but that 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 black granulation you never get rid of. And then I added just a little bit of lemon yellow to the bronzeite. And you can see the bronzeite dulls down the yellow. But uh, if I had mixed it with red or blue, it would have disappeared entirely. You wouldn't be able to see it in the mix. So, um, it was just to show you how some of these uh, Primatec colors mixes. Most of these are Primatex. I put a P on those that are. I only have the undersea green and the cobalt violet here that is not. Uh, I decided not to swatch the other colors because they are just like regular watercolors. So, let's um, put them to one side. I will use up the, the colors I got. I'm not going to toss the... Here is the mummy box side and here's the, the bronze side genuine. They, they were, you can't barely see that I've used any of the paints. So I have, will have those for a long time. And I got the hematite burnt scarlet genuine also in a 15 milliliter tube and you can also barely see I've used that. So it's not anytime soon that they will be gone. There'll be a lot of wet, wet painting before that is. The paper I use is Caddy paper. And I got a bag here of them. It's A4. It's 320 grams. And they are handmade in India. I'll show you the label here. Uh, and they're 100% recycled cotton rag, gelatin sized, acid free. And for watercolor ink, print printmaking and drawing. I haven't tried to draw much on them and they're called caddy papers. Um, but they're kind of a rough and tough kind of paper the, with deckled edges and uh, with little imperfections here and there. There's some sometimes some spots or some fibers and stuff. So, But they usually have one good and one less good side. Um, I'm going to turn this one off again so we get rid of the flipper and I'll put that one on instead. So that's the paper and, and it's really not very absorbent because of the gelatin. So it's perfect and, and the rough surface is really perfect for wet and wet painting. The brush I use is an, I think ES is for Escado and it's a size 12. I usually don't use that size brushes. but when you need a lot of water, you need a lot of water, and then you need a big brush. So, I'll see if I can find a way to both paint and um, <laughs> fit my palette in here. I'm sorry, you will have to look at me reach across here. So, let's start with that Mayan blue again. I had to fill up a couple of the colors again after I did the swatch. Um, because otherwise I wouldn't have enough paint for this painting. So more cobalt violet. I went very heavy on it yesterday. And I had to put up some more burnt bronzite and some rhodonite. Those were the colors I kind of needed.
So it's very easy to get dry brush effect on this paper because it hold, even though it doesn't absorb the water, it kind of holds onto it. So. I got a little pack of this, so I got a, a square pack as well. But I haven't started using it yet. Yeah. So, I will be good for a while. For now, this is my go to paper for wet and wet. Paintings. Well, it's not overly expensive actually. So, and you get some like that is one of those. Oh, it came off. Sometimes you can have a little bit of something that absorbs the paint a little different, but. That was just loose pieces. So, flowers. And today I want the flower to kind of take up most of my my paper. I'm not gonna mess around with any green leaves other than a few down here. So I want to go like that. So, because this is not very strong color. I need quite a few layers of that. Because even though this is fresh paint right out of the tube ish, I poured it an hour ago or so before it went and fed my bunnies. Um, it doesn't give off very much of itself. I'm just going to use the, the greens I mixed yesterday for the line here. And that's kind of the level of of leaves I want to do today. So the the blue kind of faded out as it started to dry. So I'm gonna add some more of that. And that's pretty much how it's gonna go. When you do wet and wet, if you get something done you're not quite satisfied with, you can erase it a little bit with just a bit of water.
Let's see how my strokes are floating out here. That's what happens with this paper when it's very wet. I'll have to go back and add them again. I like a little more curve to this. Let's see if I can swing that. there. Yeah, that's better. And I don't mind the sky being a little uneven here. That's actually just part of create a little more interest in, in things. It's one thing I noticed about wet and wet. You don't really want flat colors too much. And that is why some of those granulating and separating colors are interesting in wet and wet because part of the interest is the change in color and, and the textures that the paint makes on the paper. So, um, I think I will have to let this dry. I'll dry. Actually, I'll help it a little bit with a hair dryer. But I'll pause the camera in the meantime so this video doesn't get too long. So, it's not super dry, but it should be dry enough to work with now. And I move my palette away because I don't need the paints to dry back up when I use the hair burner, I mean the hair dryer. So let's try and add some more color to this mixture here. I got an empty well there, so let's use that for mixing. You can see how much this cobalt violet granulates. It's quite wild. Now, today I'm going to do a little more of an indication of some shapes on this because this is more of a close up. But I'm still not going to detail it as I would if it was a wet on dry painting. Well, now it's a, it is actually a wet and dry now, but I'm still working kind of in the same manner as wet and wet. Make some more. This is the water knife that I'm using to mix in with that. And with this size brush I that I'm not used to working with, 
I have to remember I need to mix a lot more paint than I'm used to because this is a very thirsty brush it it really soaks up a lot of water and paint Not too shabby, when I have to say myself. I'm much more pleased with this this far than I was yesterday. Trying to use the, the brush to give some shapes to the, the leaves. It's not a technique I'm particularly used to using, so it's a good thing to practice. Okay, one going over there and maybe one over here. So, this is much more what I had in mind when I was thinking about what to do about it yesterday after I messed everything up. So, that's, that's why I bother to, to do it again, me. It is because I know I can do it better. And, um, so why not, why not give it a go and make something you're more happy with than the failure of yesterday and make it into today's success. I'm repeating, I, now this is a, absolutely by no means a co exact copy of, of what I did yesterday, but re repeating something the same ish will will show you if you improve or not. Uh, it would be very very strange if you didn't improve at all. If you don't improve, it's because you didn't uh, confront what was the matter the first time. You have to kind of um, figure that out before you can improve. And that's where the self-criticism come in, comes in. You kind of have to have some, but don't have so much that you kill yourself over it. Um, it needs to be your friend and not your enemy. Because you have to, to look at it and go, hmm, I don't like it, but what is it that, that doesn't work? And yesterday it was that green hot mess at the bottom. The flowers kind of worked. So I'm just kind of repeating what I did with the flowers yesterday. Um, and then do something different about the green.
Or it could be a color combination that didn't work. There can be so much that goes wrong. But but admit it to yourself when, when uh, you did something that is, well, yeah, yeah. Let's try something else. So. I got a darker green or a different green up there. I'm just adding a little extra edges here to to separate things from each other a little bit. And to make some brighten up a little no, put some life into the green here. If it's just one color it it looks kind of boring. Kind of feel like putting a very faint kind of a little bit of pink triangles in there and maybe something up there. Just to indicate it's not a plant living alone. They usually comes in and drifts. There's quite a few of them together. Just a little bit of that purple in there. Try and let that green bleed out a little bit into the background. blue in here. And add a little bit in there. Let's Yeah, that's just became kind of a little bit of a hint over here. That's that's nice. Yeah, start running out a little bit too much.
keep on moving stuff so I don't get any hard dry edges anywhere. to add a little bit of amethyst and I only really have a little bit left on my palette. I'll mix it in with this. And just hint at some shades at the underside of things here. So this is again not a masterpiece, but it's quite okay for where I'm at, at my lack of skill level in this technique. Um, so I'll, uh, I'm, I'm quite pleased with this, as I haven't done much wet and wet that came out looking like, like anything much. some shading in here a little bit too but not too much Create a little bit of feeling of depth. Hmm. Not, not too bad. Still want some darker colors up in that. Um, I'm not entirely sure how to do that though, because I also don't want them too dark. Just a little bit here and there. I might 
might have to get the tube of amethyst out because I'm not sure I can finish this with what little is left. Maybe. Oh, that helped a lot. Yeah, I think I will call this done. It's a little bit of a long video, but uh, real-time painting, here you go. I somewhat wet and wet, with a little bit on wet and dry as well. But that was my remake of this one. So um, I'm, I'm more pleased with this one, and I won't sign it yet because it's still soaking wet. I'll put a a dry photo of this in my thumbnail and thank you all again for watching my my crazy painting experiments and please throw me a like and if you haven't already please subscribe I'll be back with more stuff next time I'll probably do something I feel more at home with bye